Stolen Blueprints, Game Changer Engineering, A Wealthy Businessman, and the Skull of the Last Kazakh Khan. But what do these have in common? The answer is Buran, the secret space shuttle of the Soviet Union. A masterpiece that could have shaped the entire space industry. So, what happened? Back in 1988, Intel revealed that the Soviet Union was investing billions of dollars into a space shuttle program. You have probably never heard of it because it was developed in secret and only ever launched once. That's not to say the program failed. In contrast, the Soviet Union didn't just copy NASA's space shuttle template. They optimized it and went far and beyond to ensure that the Buran space shuttle was more superior to the American version. To understand why this was the case, we have to travel all the way back to the late 1960s. At the time, Soviets were just getting hints of NASA's plan to replace their rockets with reusable spacecraft. Initially, they were less concerned about the reports and continued with other ongoing space projects at hand. This included the plan to send a Soviet astronaut to the moon and a lofty ambition to build a space station and maybe even a moon base. However, as the rumors lingered on, the Soviets became insecure and ultimately uncomfortable with NASA's decision to roll out a reusable spacecraft. They envisaged several scenarios that could play out if the United States succeeded with the project. For one, the shuttle could help the US military dominate space in its entirety. It could also facilitate the launch of sophisticated high-tech weapons that could be used to hijack spy satellites belonging to the Soviet Union. And to worsen their fears, there were some inconsistencies on NASA's part. Soviets couldn't understand why NASA was building a second launch site for the shuttle at the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. They feared that satellites launched from Vandenberg could be capable of intercepting significant areas of the Soviet Union meaning that NASA could potentially use it as a route to carry out nuclear strikes on the country. Furthermore, speculations suggested that the shuttle program could make 60 trips to space within a year, about 10 times more than the record number at the time. The Soviet Union officials were convinced that there was more to the United States space shuttle program than meets the eye. So they rolled out a space shuttle program of their own called Buran. The development was classified as top secret, but it was only a matter of time before the entire world knew what was cooking. On April 12, 1981, exactly 20 years after the Soviets put a man into space, NASA launched its first space shuttle. The achievement left the Soviets speechless and gave them no other choice but to speed up their program. They carried on with the project in secret and rolled out Buran seven years later. However, that wasn't the only surprise of the day. It was clear that the new Soviet space shuttle is a direct replica of the US version. It's not a coincidence though, as the space shuttle's documents wasn't classified during the development. However, subsequent investigation revealed that the Soviet secret police laid their hand on some design templates from NASA in the 70s and 80s. But more importantly, the Soviet Union knew that they had a deep knowledge of space already. So rather than just copy what NASA did, they leveraged on their own knowledge and methods to make a more efficient space shuttle. The Buran came with a lot of upgrades. To start with, the US space shuttle needed extra boost from two reusable solid rockets to fly as its main engines couldn't do the job alone. In contrast, the Buran didn't have a primary engine. Instead, it's powered by an independent, super heavy rocket called Energia. The launch vehicle had the capacity to place about 100 tons in low Earth orbit, up to 20 tons to geostationary orbit, and up to 32 tons by translunar trajectory into lunar orbit. Meanwhile, the Energia was powered by liquid fuel, and its thrust could be controlled very well. The solid rocket boosters of the US version couldn't be turned off after ignition. Although the space shuttle's engine could be reused, it required extensive maintenance between launches, which was a major disadvantage compared to the Soviet version. The Buran space shuttle even had ejection seats for all astronauts. And more significantly, it was able to carry out automated flights on its own, meaning that an unmanned Buran could be used to deliver payloads to space or come in handy in case of a rescue mission. 
The one and only time it flew, everything went flawless. After making two orbit, the shuttle re-entered Earth's atmosphere and made a perfect landing in Kazakhstan on November 15, 1988. Something that has never been done before, nor any day since. Despite the enthusiasm that the Soviets started with, they simply couldn't carry on with the project. Kremlin engineers had succeeded in making a better space shuttle, but one thing they couldn't find, a way to bring the costs down. The financial problems and the ever-approaching dissolution of the Soviet Union sealed Buran's fate. There were no other launch attempts after the first and only flight, and the program got officially suspended in 1993. But it wasn't all doom for the Soviet Union. They had the Soyuz rocket, which allowed them to launch payloads into space six times cheaper than it would cost with the Buran space shuttle. So they quickly lost interest in the program. But how come the only remaining shuttle is on sale by a Kazakh businessman? Before shutting down the program, only one Buran was finished. One reached 95-97% to 97 state, and three more were in the making. The one that visited space and its younger brother were kept in a big hangar in Baikonur Cosmodrome, which became part of Kazakhstan after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. However, budget problems were big. The country didn't have enough source to keep the hangar in good condition. So as a result, the Buran that took the trip to space was destroyed in 2002 when the roof of the building collapsed. The incident also killed eight workers, but left the other Buran unharmed. Due to the financial crisis the country suffered, they started to sell unnecessary space stuff to be able to pay the rent for the strategically important Baikonur. RKK Energia, the firm that played one of the biggest roles in the development of the shuttle, did exactly the same. So in a tricky and almost untraceable way, the shuttle became a property of a Kazakh businessman, Doren Musa, in 2011. Even though the Kazakh state sued him and tried to claim the spacecraft, the court decided in favor of the businessman, so the last piece of Soviet engineering is in private hands. Roscosmos did great effort to trace out who the real owner is, but they haven't succeeded. However, the businessman reached out to them and informed the Russians that he is the rightful owner of the Buran, and the spacecraft is on sale. Well, kind of. As the businessman is not willing to accept money for the shuttle, but only the skull of the last Kazakh Khan, Kanaseri Kasimov. But why the odd price tag? Well, Kanaseri Khan led the army against the Russians between 1837 and 1847 and became the last Kazakh Khan as his bitter rival took his life. After the beheading, his skull was immediately sent to Moscow, and the Russians still have it. It is exhibited in a museum to this very day, despite the fact that according to the official Russian standpoint, they don't know where the skull is. Kazakhstan tried to claim back the remains of Kasimov, but so far, Russia seems to withstand. The businessman argues that the skull is a national treasure for them, while it holds almost no value to the Russians. And since 2011, he is the owner of one of the biggest Russian treasures, Buran. Rumors have been heard that Russia may want to revive the shuttle project as a substitute for Soyuz capsules, so there might be a slight chance for Kazakhstan.